Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Ifat Afek. I'm a system architect at, at Nokia and the PTL of the OpenStack, uh, of the OpenStack Vitrash project. And I'm going to present uh, together with my colleague, Alexei Weil, a core contributor in Vitrage. Uh, we are going to um, present the project updates in uh, Vitrage. We will uh, describe the, what we are doing in Pike version and our plans for the future. Um, I will start with a brief overview view about the Vitrage project. Then I will discuss the main features in Pike. Uh, then Alexei will present a demo and uh, talk about uh, our roadmap and plans for uh, Queen's version. Um, Vitrage is an uh, official open stack service for root cause analysis. It helps organize, analyze, and expand the open stack events and alarms. A cloud administrator that has a fault in the cloud may see a very long list of alarms, and it may be hard to understand what the root cause of these alarms is. And this is where Vitrage can help. Vitrage has another, uh, another role of uh, creating new alarms on problems that are not directly monitored. For example, in case of an interface uh, failure, a physical interface, Vitrage can uh, identify the VMs, the instances that are uh, unreachable, and raise alarms on these instances. Nova is not aware of such problems. In Nova, everything seems fine. But Raj can help the cloud administrator understand that there is a problem with the instances. Maybe there is also a problem with the uh, applications running on top of these instances. Raj will raise additional alarms on such applications. Uh, some background about the project. Uh, the Vitrage project was started during the Mitaka cycle. Um, six and a half months later, it became an official OpenStack uh, project. This happened a year ago. Uh, the first official version was a Newton version, and now we are developing Pike. We have uh, about 10 contributors uh, actively contributing to the Pike version. Um, I'll talk about uh, the high-level architecture of Vitrage. Um, Vitrage collects information um, from uh, different data sources. Um, some of them are OpenStack services, Nova, Neutron, Cinder, and HIT. Um, we have AODH, this is telemetry alarming service for alarms, and we also connect to external, data, uh, external monitors, uh, Zabbix, Nagios, or CollectD. And all this information is combined into a topology graph, the entity graph. In this graph, you can see the physical layer, the virtual layer, and the application layer. You can understand how they relate to one another and how they affect one another. Whenever the graph is changed, Vitrage Evaluator uh, checks if there are actions that should be taken. By actions, I mean either raise another alarm on another problem in the system, um, maybe modify the state of a resource uh, in case Vitrage identifies an error, or mark causal relationship between two alarms. Um, the, lo the, the rules for when to make these uh, actions are defined in templates. These are YAML files that the user can uh, define and edit. Um, I'll talk about it later. If Vitrage raises an alarm or modifies a state of an object, it, notif it may notify external systems. Right now, Vitrage notifies Nova if a host is down. It, we also send uh, SNMP notifications and we are working on uh, notifications to Mistral, and I'm going to talk about it later. Vitrage has an API to get topology, to get the list of alarms, and to get root cause analysis. Um, on top of it, we have CLI, and, um, and we have a UI as part of the Horizon dashboard um, for Vitrage. So this was the overview, and now it describes the main feature that we are working on in Pike. Um, so one important thing that we started working on in Pike was to um, do an overall design of the high availability solution for Vitrage. We have uh, several goals that we would like to achieve. Uh, first one is to have a completely highly available uh, solution. Another goal is, uh, that is related um, is to provide alarms history and root cause analysis history, and we'll discuss a bit later. 
Um, and uh, currently, Vitraj uh, topology graph is, uh, is held in a, a network X. It's an in-memory graph database. It performs very well, but if we get to very large uh, uh, distributions, we, we might need a persistent graph database. So this is another thing that we are checking the option to, to support a persistent graph database instead of network X. So this is the... Um, the architecture that we are thinking of, it's currently under review, it's not final. Um, in, the, in the current implementation, uh, Vitraj Graph Service uh, has uh, the, da the data sources drivers that connect to different data sources and a processor that uh, help transforming the information from the data source into the uh, graph um, language. And we are going to split it to different processes, and each uh, group of processes will be highly available, and this way we can make sure that no event is, get, is getting lost, and that if one process fails, there will be another one to replace it. Uh, the detailed design um, uh, describes uh, specifically where we need a master-master and when we need master-slave, and like I said, it's still under review. And uh, in order to support alarm history, we think of um, uh, event sourcing mechanism. Uh, we may uh, store all the events that arrive to Vitraj in a, in a database. And once in a while, we, we may create a snapshot of the graph status. And if someone is interested in the state of the alarms yesterday or last week, we can do a replay and, and show the, the status of the past. Okay, another main focus in the PyCall is, is collaborating with other projects. Um, we added Vitraj to the RDO. This is the RPM uh, uh, distribution of OpenStack. So it's much more simple for everyone to uh, install Vitraj these days. Um, we have a continuous work with OPNFV Doctor. This is the fault management project of OPNFV. Um, Vitraj uh, performs the specifications that OPNFV doctor defines for uh, how the fault management is inspector should behave. And we are currently working on installation in OPNFV and we are trying to finish the requirements. Um, we added in Pike uh, SNMP notifications. If you have a system that uh, requires SNMP notifications, we can send them for every alarm that is raised by Vitraj. Um, and we just did a POC for Vitraj integration with Mistral. Mistral is OpenStack workflow engine. Um, it's a very powerful engine where you can define different <coughs> workflows. And we showed the demo as part of the Collect D integration with Vitraj. It was this week, a presentation uh, in the summit. And uh, a very short uh, explanation about the integration. Uh, Zabbix may report an alarm to Vitraj. Uh, for example, an, an alarm of a switch failure. Vitraj can evaluate the alarm and deduce that there is a, an instance that, is unreach, uh, that, that the host is down, actually, unreachable, and raise another alarm on the host. And today, in, in such a case, Vitraj notifies Nova that the host is, now, is down. Nova is not aware of it. This is part of the doctor use case. And Vitraj notifies Nova. And what we want to add as a new functionality <coughs> is that Vitraj will also notify Mistral. And then, for example, Mistral can execute a workflow to evacuate the failed host and move all the instances to a host that is uh, working well. Um, in Pike, we are going to introduce a POC for machine learning. Um, like I said, um, the behavior of when to raise alarms on other resources and when to mark root cause relationship between two alarms, this behavior is currently defined in template YAML files. Uh, these files are very easy to edit, and uh, the cloud administrator can add new templates based on his experience. But uh, we would like to, to make it automatic. Um, so in, um, in Pike, we, we are trying to make the very first steps towards it and have an algorithm that was developed uh, together with Bellabs uh, to find a causal relationship between uh, historic alarms. So we examine some history of the alarms and we try to find correlation between the alarms. 
And this is not so trivial because uh, it could be the two alarms always appear more or less in the same time, but none of them is the root cause of the other. Uh, it could happen that both of them are caused by a third alarm that we just don't uh, monitor. Um, it could be that the first alarm is not the root cause, but the second alarm is the root cause. Maybe they are retrieved from different monitors and each monitor has a different frequency. So determining the cause is not trivial and we are trying to do it. Um, and uh, we, we, we hope to, this work started in Pike and will continue in Queens. Um, another issue that was raised uh, was uh, alarm equivalence. Uh, by alarm equivalence, I mean that it could happen that two different monitors report the same alarm. Uh, for example, Zabbix and Nagios may both report CPU, high CPU load. In a, each of them, the name of the alarm will be different, the severity might be different, but basically it means the same. We would like, uh, we, we actually are currently working on um, introducing a, a, a way to determine that these two alarms are equivalent, mark this in the entity graph, and then we will be able to, to identify this, this uh, equivalence and uh, act accordingly. Uh, another use case is if Vitrage raises a deduced alarm on an instance that there is a high CPU load on the instance, and then later on, Zabbix reports the same problem. We would like to, to identify that this is really the same alarm and not two distinct alarms. There are several options of how to mark this, um, this case. Um, some of them are problematic. We selected the option of um, adding in the template a way to, to say these two or three alarms are equivalent and then uh, if you say in the template, if you have a template that with root cause relationship of one of the alarms, we automatically assume that there is a similar template for, um, we automatically generate a similar template for the equivalent alarms. There are a few uh, smaller features that we are working on, um, some are important. Um, we added, uh, in the beginning of Pike, we added multi-tenancy support in Horizon. Uh, we already had it in the API, but not in the UI. So in the admin UI, you can see uh, the entire entity graph, the entire root cause analysis. And in the project tab, you only see uh, what is relevant to your tenant. You don't see the entire graph, and you don't see the entire uh, effect on other instances that are not yours. We added a, a new API for querying the resources that are known to Vitrage. You can query a specific resource or a, a, resource, a list of resources by a certain type. Uh, we modified the idea of Vitrage. It used to be calculated by a list of fields like resource type uh, and resource name. And uh, we currently are using a UUID like the rest of OpenStack. Um, and uh, we are going to, um, we are going to implement a mechanism for, that allows registering to specific vitrage alarms. So you could get notifications on specific alarms that are raised by vitrage. And last important feature that we are working on in Pike, actually it was already finished, is enhancing the language of the templates. Um, we already had in templates an option to say if one condition and another condition occurred, or if one condition or another condition, and now we added support for the not. So you can say if one alarm and not the other alarm in the condition of the template. Um, this is uh, specifically usable for high availability scenarios. Uh, for example, in case of a hit stack that has two instances, you can say if one instance is down, I want to raise a warning on the hit stack. And if two instances are down, it's a critical error. Um, so, like I said, this is supported, and now um, I'll invite uh, Alexei to show a demo about this use case. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Ifat. Um, so, I'm going to show uh, a demo uh, in which we're going to see the use of the not term in the vitrage templates 
and also we're going to see the integration of uh, network physical uh, components in the vitrage entity graph. So let's start with the demo. We're going to the entity graph. Okay, so what we can see here, we can, do you see? Yeah, yeah, okay. So what we can see here, we can see here that we have uh, this availability zone, we have two instances. Um, each instance has uh, uh, two hosts. Each host has two instances, as we can see here. We can see here that we have uh, this heat stack which is comprised of uh, two instances in high availability mode between them. We can see here the neutron uh, ports, the neutron network, and on the right here, we can see that uh, we have written in our deployment that uh, a script that discovers the OVS topology of the computes. So we can see here that we have this OVS bridge that is connected to the host and to each one of the ports, and to each one of the virtual ports. We also connected the OVS bridge to the physical OVS port and to the physical OVS interfaces. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring down the interfaces and we'll see what happened in Vitrage. I'm looking for the interfaces. Bringing them down. So now we can see our Zabbix. In Zabbix, we have uh, added a, a, a trigger that uh, says that if, let's say, we have an interface down on a compute, then raise an alarm. So let's see that the alarm is raised in Zabbix, as we can see here. And we can see that a new alarm was added on the interface here, on the physical interface. We have written a, a template that says that if we have an alarm on the interface, propagate it to, the, to all of the instances that are sitting on that, co on that compute that, on which the interface is on. Now I'm going to bring down the second interface Okay, I've changed the number of the interface. Now we'll see that there are two alarms here, two triggers, and now we'll see that in the graph. Okay, so what we can see here, now we can see that instead of the warning alarms that we had on the instances, we now have a, a critical alarm on the instances because both of the interfaces are, interfaces are down, it means that the instance uh, and the host are not working. And because of that, we have raised also a warning alarm on the heat stack. Now we are going to see the, the root cause analysis of what happened here. Let's see. Okay, so here we can see that we have two uh, alarms on both of the interfaces that caused an alarm, a network error, a, cr a critical error on the instance, which caused a suboptimal error on the stack. This is all configurable, of course, and can be done in, the, in a different way. So now we will bring up, back up the interfaces and see that everything is getting back to normal. We can see that the critical alarms disappear and the alarm from the heat stack disappears as well. And only the warning alarms appear. Now when I will bring up 
the second interface, it will all disappear. Great. So what we have seen here, we have seen here uh, two use cases. One is talking about the high availability use case in which we have defined template that says that uh, if I have a, if I have a, an instance uh, on which one of the interfaces has an alarm and the other interface has no alarm, then uh, raise a warning alarm on the instance. But if I have two interfaces on, on which one of, when on each one of them we have an alarm, then raise a critical alarm on that instance. Okay, sorry. Sorry about that. Some presentation problem. Okay, so now let's talk about the Queen's Roadmap. Um, the main changes that I want to talk about is our three changes. Uh, the first one is the Alarm and Darcy history. Um, each uh, system needs to have a history. And in, and in our case, uh, we have three use cases that I want to talk about. One is, let's say you have an operator that is going uh, back home in the evening and then comes back in the morning and sees that every, everything is fine in vitrage. But actually, when he was at home, um, a CPU usage uh, alarm was created on the host and then it went back uh, to OK. And when we, he came to the office, everything was fine. But actually, there was some kind of problem in the system while he was at home. Uh, so we would like to know about that. Um, and the history will help us to know that something has, was wrong in the system and then he can do a countermeasure steps to see why that happened and maybe to fix it and uh, to see that everything is fine. Another thing, another use case why we need the, uh, the history is uh, because of the machine learning. Uh, in order for the machine learning to work well, uh, it, it, it needs to have as much data as it can in, in order to analyze it and to understand steps from it and then to take a, a actions due to that. And this is another reason why we need it. And the last reason that I want to talk about is the following, the, the RCA history. Uh, let's say we have a host. Let's say we have a host here on which uh, an alarm was... Uh, reason, the host down. Now the vitrage will propagate the alarm to the VMs, as we can see here. Then let's say that uh, after some time, because of that alarm, um, a new alarm was created on the stack because it has some CPU problems or because it can't work because, of, because the VMs has, have problems, this uh, alarm, then we added, a, then we add a new template that says that if I have such an alarm, then create a root cause analysis between, between this alarm and this alarm. But then let's say that the host down uh, alarm was deleted, as we can see here, but the alarm here, the VNF down alarm is still on the VNF because the VNF is not working because it had some other problem due to the problems on the VMs. But now, when the operator w will come back, he will see only this alarm, and he, will, and he won't know what really was the root cause analysis of the problems. And this, and, this, and this is why we need to know the RCA history in order for the operator to know that this VNF down actually was caused be because of previous alarms that were in the system. Um, the second main change that I want to talk about is the alarm ag aggregation. Um, we need alarm aggregation uh, in two kind of types. The first type is in the alarm list. Let's say you have a Zabbix alarm that 
on the host, as we saw, that caused the deduced alarms on the instances and then caused the deduced alarm on the uh, stack. So what will happen is that in the arbitrage alarm list, you will see like a very big uh, list of alarms and uh, we would like to make it a bit, uh, a, a bit less human readable and not to see all of the alarms, but only to see the main alarm and then you can drill down on this uh, original, original alarm and see all the other deduced alarm that was, that was caused because of that. And in this way, you're, you, can o you can only see the original alarms and you can drill down and see uh, everything. Another thing is uh, why we need the, the alarm aggregation is we need it in the entity graph. If I uh, spoke before on the, on the alarm equivalence, in which we know that uh, alarms that appear from uh, different data sources, such as AODH, Vitraj, uh, Zabbix, and Nagios, can be equivalent. So then, in the graph, we will see, let's say on the instance, three different equivalent alarms, but uh, it will make, a, it will be a very, uh, like a chaos in the graph, and we would like to, to make it uh, appear a, a little bit better, and thus we'll, we can create an, an aggregated alarm, and then if somebody wants, he can drill down again to the alarm and see all of the different alarms that arrived from the, the different data sources and see all of them. As we can see here in our graph, we have this, uh, this uh, original alarm that caused three deduced alarms that caused another deduced alarm on the heat stack. Okay. The third use case, that, uh, the, 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 fir the third uh, change that I want to talk about is uh, the UI uh, changes that we want to make. This is very, very important to us because uh, we still have many, many things to do in, in the UI. One of the main changes that we need to do is, is, in, the, is in the entity graph because at the moment, let's say we have uh, hundreds of uh, entities but, uh, or maybe thousands, but later on we'll have much more. And in order to make use of it and not to see like uh, thousands of entities in this small kind of screen w in which you won't understand anything, we need to, to understand how we can make it more usable for, for, an, for, for an operator. Uh, Few things that we thought about is the smart selection, uh, in which uh, you can you have uh, like a search box when you can uh, write uh, what you want to find, and then it will uh, highlight it. And then we want to have maybe a layered view, where you can uh, see uh, the graph uh, depending on the data sources that you choose. Um, another thing that we thought about maybe is to have like a small screen on the side of all the graph and the big screen where you zoom in and zoom out and you see where you are exactly on the small screen. Um, this is that. Um, if I talked before, I have talked about before about the RCA of the deleted alarm in the previous uh, slide. And also maybe we would like to have a timeline slider, which means that uh, we'll have the graph and we'll have this kind of a slider and then you can slide it, let's say from one month ago to now and then you like, you'll see all of the changes are, which we had while you move that line slider. And then you can uh, like see the history and understand what is going on there and everything. Uh, another thing, another important thing is the template editor which at the moment uh, in order to, to write templates you need to write a YAML file but uh, we would like to add uh, something in the UI that will, it will be much more easier to do that um, for a user and uh, then many, much more many use cases we will be able to create. Um, okay, so now what we're going to do is an open discussion. Um, we in Vitraj have many, many questions uh, to many different users all the time. And one of the main questions that we have is uh, 
what are the main use cases that you use? We as a Nokia are familiar with the telecom use cases, but we want to be familiar with the public cloud uh, use cases and many different other uh, uses. So please, if you have uh, any data knowledge for us, we would love to hear. Hello, um, I have a question. So I, um, I see that you are trying to extend the size of the entity that you can monitor. I was uh, um, uh, wondering uh, if uh, this extension includes something like uh, the IoT world, like can I get to 200 million entities and make an alarm on a single device or is this completely outside the scope of the project? Um, I think uh, uh, I'll try to handle this. Um, at the moment, we are talking about a um, system that are comprised of, uh, let's say, um, I don't know how many nodes in, the, in which you have like, a, I don't know, 60 computes. Uh, so you will have like how many computes? 1,000 computes, let's say? Well, yeah, 1,000 computes. So if you want an entity for each device, uh, it can be millions. If you uh, want to raise an alarm, if you want to propagate your alarms down to the single device that is in your pocket, then it becomes millions and millions. So I was wondering, um, work? when you mean device, you mean like let's say you have a let's say your phone. Yeah, um, I don't think if I to have any. So we we actually um, I'm not connected. Uh, uh, we, we actually never tested Vitrage for millions. Uh, we tested it for like tens of thousands, but uh, I mean, it's really up to you if uh, you can control whether you want to propagate the alarm to all of the devices or maybe it's not interesting. Um, yeah. and okay, thanks. And anyone else? Uh, we can continue to the other questions that we have here. Uh, is like what kind of vitrage functionality you use the most, uh, what would you like to be changed there or added to there, um, anything, someone? From the roadmap that we showed to you, do you think that there should be maybe other things that we need to add to vitrage? in order for your use cases to be uh, done. Okay, a new volunteer. Uh, so I'm with DreamHost and we have a public cloud. So where I see Vitraj is, you know, from an operator side, it would certainly be interesting. And I don't know that I have a whole lot of uh, feedback on that side. I mean, you guys look like you're on the right track, but it would be interesting to offer this kind of public facing as well which would require some like tenant level scoping. So I could, you know, say for each one of my, you know, we have hundreds of people on our cloud so being able to say, you know, here's Vitraj, here's your specific stuff. Yeah, actually we have it already. Is we that have, already? Okay. Yeah, it's already there. Uh, it is, uh, it supports multi-tenancy and it's already there and yeah. Um, so I guess, I don't know, pardon me for it's not okay. knowing all these things, but um, we, we also, you know, have complicated network overlays and stuff like that is, how much of that stuff are we able to expose to um, our particular tenants? You know, we may not want to expose our hypervisors, but maybe we do want to expose our switching plane. Uh, so at the moment, what we uh, expose to the multi-tenant is everything that is with their uh, tenant ID, and at max one, uh, one level beyond, which means that if I have uh, an instance, okay, this is with his tenant ID and the instance is connected to the compute, but the compute is, for, is of the admins. So, so it will show that the instance is connected to the admin and no, and nothing else, because all the other stuff are like of the admins, let's say the physical network topology. Okay, thank you. But again, if you see, if you want something else to be done uh, and the use case of it, we would, like, we would love to hear about that and to see how we can integrate it into Vitrage. Um, yeah. Um, 
if our if my cloud it supports, uh, I mean uh, bare link. A what? Yeah, bare link with uh, multiple link. Yeah, right. So in your entity model, you will show it's right or not. In your demo, you will, you will have the entity model. Okay. Yeah, right. We will show it. Show it. I mean, show the the real the real link. I have. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm sorry. Oh, Please okay. again. No, if, no, it's okay. It's okay. <coughs> it's okay. Uh, if my my cloud support multiple link, multiple yeah, right. link between yeah, right. entities. Yeah, be, be, between uh, the services. Right. Okay. Yeah, right. So, um, for example, in, in your server, maybe you have multiple li links, and then uh, you support multiple link. So, if the link done, you can change to the other link. So, I want to know that your your graph model will show. So uh, change your so change it. Or not. So the entity graph uh, yeah, right. is a multigraph, a network X multigraph, which means that it's, it, it supports uh, multi-relationships multi between entities. And in order to see the multi-links, you just need to maybe add a new data source in which you, you will connect those multi-links to whatever you need. Yeah, right. So it's OK, right? But yeah. if the link is done, I mean the link is done, you will change to the other link. The, the model will change the um, immediately or not. If you can show that it's okay because I, yes. the, the link is active, the other one is bad, yeah, right? Yeah, right, you move the other one. Yeah. But you, you actually, for the operators, you know that the link really is that. It's important, right? Yeah. All right. You yeah. Alarm yeah, right. Again, yeah, right. The yeah, right. The other one, yeah. the model change, right? Because the, um, the link active is the, the left one, and this <laughs> one time and you change to a right one, so you have to. The, in the in the entity map, the graph should have to show this one. Two two parts. One is sent around to the okay, operator. Two parts. <coughs> yeah, right. Do you want to see the alarm? Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. The old alarm can be uh, clear, or I, I don't know what, what, what you want to see. I want to see uh, the alarm part. Is it yeah, right. One minute. Oh, okay. So I will just finish the presentation and then because we are uh, out of time uh, we can uh, speak about it in a minute uh, so I will I, I just have to say that uh, we still have many many things to do in vitrage uh, and to uh, in order to improve it uh, many things in uh, with integrating with other projects and this uh, specifically uh, many uh, changes in the UI so Please, we uh, look for contributors, and uh, if you want to help us and to help the community, please come. That's it.